folks, welcome back to YouTube. Kevin Inouye here from Flight Designer LLC. Um, as a part of a workshop that I'm doing for uh, Neutral Chaos for their um, the sort of the, the online version of the Tourist Trap Stage Combat Workshop, they'd normally do the uh, Trapped at Home Workshop. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, to offer for a Practical Firearms Handling for Performers Workshop was sort of a, a solo practice kata, right? Like sort of a, a uh, tai Chi form, uh, uh, solo kata, that, that, uh, in the model of different martial arts, or I guess if you wanted to go there, the, the gun kata of equilibrium, um, just to, to practice some of the basic gun handling skills. So a, a form that people could run through on their own, whether with the, the cardboard training guns that I talked about in the last video that folks could make for themselves to, to work through some of this stuff, uh, or an airsoft or dummy gun or whatever else you have. Um, you know, probably not something you want to do with a real firearm unless you've like double, triple, quadruple checked that it's not loaded and that nobody else is watching and whatever else. But I would highly suggest not doing this with a live firearm. You know, worst case scenario, this works fine. Decock it. This will at least help you uh, practice good uh, trigger discipline. This idea of kind of pointing with your finger on where it's aimed so you can practice muzzle discipline and keeping this extended to figure so you're not putting the trigger guard. But if you have something like a, a, an airsoft gas blowback, that's also great. You know, work with what you got. If it's a banana, it's a banana. This is sort of my, my quick run through, and I'm putting this online primarily as sort of a potential review for anybody who's doing the workshop, who is wanting to be able to, to make this more of a, a, a practice after the fact and just develop this as, as sort of a solo routine, um, just for a, an, an at-home drill. This is not intended as, uh, uh, <clears throat> as some sort of... Um, you know, role model performance technique that you would enter in competitions like with some solo kata. Uh, this is not meant to be for public consumption, but for those of you who are just wanting a basic way to practice some of the, the muscle memory, some of the positions, some of the grip, hopefully this will help you out. So let's run through it. So the first step here is coming from sort of a, a neutral stance. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it like a, a Shizen was, was what it was in the Bujinkan system that I studied or, or whatever it is, but you know, Feet generally together, maybe hands up, maybe not, whatever. Uh, firearm is holstered. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my weight back and down and drawing my strong side, which is my holstered side, back. This makes it harder for anyone to grab my firearm, right? So I'm dropping back and away while I'm also keeping them at distance with my left arm. And I can either use a hand and then sweep back or I can do an elbow uh, depending on the, the distance that we're talking about. And I'm doing that while I find this part here, right? Well, I put the web of my thumb back into the back strap of that firearm, whatever it is, whether it's a, a you know, Breda 92, like our, our cardboard guns jamming in there, um, or 1911 with a, a nice beaver tail, a Glock, whatever. Dropping and grabbing there, keeping this finger straight so that my finger is already out of the trigger guard as this happens. And as soon as it's clear, I want to pivot up and out, and I'm actually leaning kind of back so that this slide is away from my body and angled forward and up towards whoever I'm holding back here. Boom. And my arm is not in front of the muzzle because I don't want to shoot myself in the arm. That would suck. If you do happen to have a heavy bag, that can be a great way to practice this. Um, what I want to do is I want to start right up, up against it, right? Oh, I love my heavy bag, right? And I'm actually going to start by pushing it a little bit away from me so that it's swinging towards me. So if I start up here, and I swing it out, when that comes back, it's gonna smack me, right? And so that way I can make sure that when I drop my weight and step back, I'm anchored well enough that I can stop this, either with a straight arm or with an elbow as it's coming at me. Because what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is keep my distance from that. So as it comes out, I'm dropping back, dropping my strong side back in a way so that I can bring this firearm up here and get my first shot off there. Now, as soon as I've got that first shot off, I'm gonna come back up into my a nice strong two-handed grip. So I'm bringing my hand around, not in front of the muzzle, and around here to where I've got a nice combat grip, can line up the sights and get a nice shot there. So maybe I'm starting kind of here. I'm gonna drop down and back, draw this back while I draw, and I'm actually leaning my body back a little bit here to get this first shot there. Bring this back around. Boom, boom, boom. So that's my first move, my first angle. 
Now I'm going to kind of catch something out of my peripheral vision here, and so I'm going to step away from it. Distance is your friend when you have a firearm. One, two. Now this isn't kind of an awkward position, right? It's almost like I'm, I'm dabbing, right? <laughs> but I, what I want to do is I want to have this elbow up because that gives me a, a, a position from which I can kind of redirect or block while still keeping the firearm on point. All right, so my first shot from here as I shift, boom, is up here. And I can't actually kind of see through the sights there. It's a little awkward. Uh, and that's, you know, I'm not, this is not an aimed shot. This is a, a, you know, point blank, just kind of fire into the gut of whoever's coming at me. But then as soon as I have that first shot off and I've stopped them from coming at me, I'm going to rotate through and come back to here and step in. So those first two shots, those first two angles, first one is here, boom, running out of gas. Second angle is in here, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Now I don't trust people to not be behind me. So now from here, you have some choices. If you've trained in a, a Japanese martial art with these nice wide stances, uh, I did Bujinkan for a long time, you might want to start by pivoting with this back foot that becomes the front foot. And as I do so, this sweeps down to here, along my center line, a little moment in position, Sewell, and back up. If you've done, for example, Wing Chun, and you have these, these horse stances with the kind of knees together, and you're used to the Sin Lim Dao here, um, then you can also start by pivoting this, what is the forward knee, and becomes the back knee, pivoting that in, so you have this moment here of sort of knees together, and then opening back up to here. I don't really care which way you do it, whatever feels best on your body, um, to here. And now I want you to practice some forward steps, keeping the hips and shoulders square while traveling, and imagine you had a laser pointer on here, keeping that dot as stable as possible. One, two, three. So you're, you're traveling forward while you have some shots. All right, so that's the main thing we're practicing. Low, stable footwork while being able to keep the sights online. Boom, boom, boom. Now, unfortunately, this has us out of ammo if we're uh, in one of those states where they have a 10 round magazine limit. Some of those happen, or if you have a concealed carry, uh, some of those come with like an eight round limit as a default. Um, so depending on what it is, but for now, just to get a practice in there, we're gonna pretend that we're out of ammunition at the end of that and we're at slide lock. So then from here, I'm gonna change out for a fresh magazine and come back up. Now what I'm doing for this, I'm gonna reorient towards camera here so you can see from here where we have this idea of centering on target. As we've been walking forward, one, boom, boom. From here, I'm bringing it just off to the side. Notice how I can now see my target past this, but this is still in my peripheral vision. If I drop it down, either I can't really see what I'm doing with this, or I look down at this and I can't see anymore what's happening up here with my target. I don't like either of those options. So from here, I'm just bringing it a little off to the side so I can still see this in my peripheral vision and bring it back online, All right? All right, slide lock here, turn, boom. And for now, I'll assume you only have the one magazine to practice with, that's fine. Just take the same magazine out, pretend you got something behind your back here, bring the same magazine back in, find your own hand, using your own proprioception, right? Come around the top, pull it back enough, and let forward. If you are using an airsoft gas blowback where you haven't uh, jammed the follower so that it doesn't know that it's out of ammo, you might need to hold down the slide release while you do this um, because otherwise it'll just lock back. Obviously if you're using a cardboard training gun, none of that's actually going to happen. It's just going to be that same motion there. Boom, 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 boom. So walking first through those first three targets again now. We start at a neutral, step back, draw while checking whatever that is, lean back, boom, into a proper two-handed grip, boom, boom, boom. Look, that's how we're taking a step forward. I'm gonna take another step forward and check and block. Boom, boom, boom. Whatever stance here you want to do to switch, whether it's a knees in or a knees out, and switch your grip, 
Now my hips and shoulders are both this way. One, two, three, while traveling. Check your ammo, bring it back around and back onto here. Now the next thing I wanna practice is what we call sort of slicing the pie, right? So this idea of cornering. Now this was a, a, something I had to learn when I started doing firearms because I'm used to more uh, you know, sword work or other martial arts where you wanna have a stable stance. So if I'm gonna go out to the side uh, with a sword and do an attack from here or something, I'm gonna have a nice wide stance to support that, which means my foot and thigh are way out there. Uh, when we're talking about shooting firearms from behind cover though, that presents my femoral artery to anybody who wants to take it out or my ankle. So it's a little bit awkward if you're used to that kind of martial movement. So let's say that this is a, a pillar that I want to look around the corner of. Now, I'm not doing this movie thing of like coming up this way and then swinging around. That's pure Hollywood and it's kind of crap tactically. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Pardon my mess down here in the basement. If I step out this way, I'm really presenting this target before I can actually do anything about it. So what I wanna do is make sure that no part of my body is going past where the sights of the firearm are. So if I draw a line, like a little plumber's bob, from here down to the ground, nothing should go past that line. So as I kind of edge around this corner here, I'm angling with my, my upper body first, even though this has me a little, it's, it's an awkward kind of off balance position, right? And then I'm gonna go step, step, step. And the idea is that with each one of these steps, what I'm doing is I'm kind of getting what we call a slice of the pie, right? So a little section of room each time that I can see and engage with a threat, and then I can see the next section, and then I can see the next section. And there's never a part where they can see me before I can see them, right? So I wanna be in control. Offense is everything with these firearms, right? So I wanna make sure that as I go, the first thing to sweep and to lever it around that corner uh, is, is the sights of the firearm. And as soon as anything is sticking out in there, I have the ability to fire. I have the, the initiative, as it were, right? This is me getting an initiative bonus in D&D in, uh, gamer terms. So as I go through here, I'm just gonna go one, two, Three. All right. Now, notice I'm also on balance. So if my foot does hit something along the way, in this case, I've got the uh, handgun case there, that I'm not ever overextended to where if that stops, I'm going to fall, right? I'm never beyond my base enough that if I get past my foot and then my foot gets caught on something, I'm going to trip. But at the same time, I'm also not putting my foot out there first and then shifting my weight. Right? It's not like a Tai Chi step where I step my foot out there and then shift towards it. Because as soon as I put my foot out there, anybody who's looking around that corner sees that before I can see them. And I don't like that, not with firearms. So I'm taking smaller, shorter steps. He's still a little slice of the pie. A piece there, a piece there, a piece there. Now in this situation, we're gonna say that that's it and there's nothing there. But I just want you to be able to practice that sort of slicing the pie. So from the beginning, we're here, boom, we drop down, back, one, two, three, four, five, six, turn, seven, eight, nine. We might still have a round in the chamber there if we have a 10 round magazine, but I still want a fresh magazine the magazine itself is empty. But just to practice that muscle memory, even though we would, maybe if we had a 10 round magazine, still have one in there. I'm just gonna practice doing that anyway. All right, let's say it was a nine round magazine. I actually have one of those in my uh, Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. It's an eight round magazine, but I got a, an extender from Mag Guts that added one. Cool stuff. Anyway, from this position here where we did our magazine change, boom. Notice I switched back to my strong side back as soon as I could. And because camera's there, I've also switched from an isosceles to sort of a modified weaver that helps keep me more open to camera. So this also helps you practice multiple stances. So from here, I'm gonna stay in this modified weaver because that lets me ease around the corner a little more easily. I'm gonna angle my whole body, cocking it out there, canting it, two, three. Nothing there, okay. Look both ways. I'm gonna reholster. 
And then if we're talking realistically, whatever our scenario, chances are good at that point, I'm pulling out my cell phone, I'm calling my lawyer, I'm calling my, my, uh, my presiding officer, I'm calling my, uh, I'm calling 911, whatever it is at that point, reporting what's going on. Um, but I'm keeping this handy because I don't know if they have more friends coming. So I'm not just putting that on the ground and going to here. So if we put that all together, back where I started. Starting from here, talking through it, drop back, elbow up, drawing the firearm, boom, 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 bang, 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 maybe another bang there, pivot with whatever footwork you want, put the rest down and back up into a nice isosceles, one, two, three, Magazine change, back on target into a modified weaver, so strong side back again. Look around the corner, cant it, one, two, three, nothing there. Come back, look every direction, keeping this in a nice safe position, going down to this sort of position sewel. Holster, keeping his hand out of the way, and back out. <sighs> 